I'm going down to Mickey's garage to pick up some spark plugs. You need anything? Yeah, ask Mickey if he's got any more of those girly calendars. <laughs> I can't stand the one I got from my insurance man. Save me the sports page, will you? Yeah. Say, there's a great article about a new basketball player the pros have hired. Yeah? Yeah. He's a seven-footer from Sumatra. They're giving him two million a year. Well, for a seven-foot professional basketball player, that sounds about right. I think they pay him $300,000 a foot. <laughs> well, isn't anybody in this family happy to see me? No, well, you've only been gone about 30 minutes. Well, sometimes a person likes to feel missed. Well, next time you go to the grocery store, Nell, We'll have a welcome home party. I'm glad they were out of your Fruit Loops. Oh, not again. Samantha, did I get the phone calls? Were you expecting a call? No! <laughs> Look at this pig sty. I don't know why I stay here. Nell, I'm not finished with the papers. Well, keep your papers. Well, keep your score pads. <laughs> Does Nell seem a little edgy? <laughs> Looked that way when she threw the papers in my face. Do you think it's because of her cold? No, it's Addie. What are you talking about, Joey? Addie's her best friend. Well, I asked what was wrong, and she said Addie hasn't telephoned her all week. Not to ask her dumb questions. <laughs> no! no! <laughs> What's this with you and Addie? You two were such close friends. Close? Ha! When you're close, you phone each other. But have I heard from Addie? Nope. But does it upset me? No, 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 no. Nothing yeah. about Addie upsets me. I wouldn't get upset if a building fell on her face. I wouldn't get upset if she got ran over by a steamroller. Wouldn't even upset me if she got hit by a rock that fell from the moon. Well, you know that's not going to happen. You trying to upset me, Grandpa? <laughs> uh-huh. That's her. Who? Addie. After 30 years of friendship, I know the sound of her bell. Aren't you going to answer the door? No. She can wait. She made me wait all week. But just watch her. She's gonna waltz in here like nothing is wrong. <laughs> you know, she takes friendship too lightly. To me, friendship is a sacred thing. You know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm gonna do when I open this door? I'm gonna slam it in her ugly face. <laughs> that wasn't her. Come on in, Angie. Hi, Just Nancy. come on in. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> I'm sorry, darling. I, I uh, didn't recognize you in your, your uniform. I'm a grandmother for the Glen Long Forest Brownies, and I'm selling cookies. <laughs> well, look, I I'm real sorry that I slammed the door in your face. Oh, that's okay. You get a lot of doors slammed in your face when you're selling cookies. <laughs> Angie, I thought in order to be a brownie den mother, you had to be a mother. Oh, no, I've been doing this ever since my seven-year-old niece joined, but I do intend to be a mother someday. Then I'll have lots of little brownies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Aunt Mel, can we buy some cookies? Okay, but just one box. Okay, what kind of cookies do you sell, Angie? Chocolate chip, mint chocolate, and peanut butter. Mm, we'll take the chocolate chip. All I have is vanilla wafers. <laughs> That's okay. I love vanilla wafers. We'll take two boxes, okay, Aunt Mel? No, you won't. You will take one box. They are loaded with sugar. What do you want, your teeth falling out of your head? <laughs> That's okay. Addie told me to save two boxes for her. Ha! Here. <laughs> I'm taking my brownies to Turtle Lake to look for frogs. Bye, y'all. 
Angie is wonderful, even if she does have her head in the clouds. Yeah, high, thin, and scattered. I do not believe Pam Freeman. She says she doesn't trust a guy with a mustache. Is she crazy? Tom Selleck has a mustache. So did Joseph Stalin, John Dillinger, and Ho Chi Minh. What series were they on? The Brady Bunch. Come on, Nell. You must think I'm awfully dumb. That was Robert Reed, Florence Henderson, and Ann B. Davis, and none of them had mustaches. Those guys must have been on something else. Another scattered cloud just went by. I know the sound of her ring. <laughs> then why aren't you answering it? Because I didn't want Addie to think that I am sitting by the phone waiting for her to call. <laughs> then I'll answer it. Suit yourself, darling. Hello? Oh, yeah, hi, Addie. What a tip, what a tip. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's here. Yep, it's Addie. Just tell her to hold on, honey. Uh, tell her to hold on. No, 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 no. She made me wait all week. She could just wait. Take my time, honey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Put, uh, put on hold. Make it wait. No, I'm coming. No, you don't understand. You see, Nell, give it a see, call. Eddie, well, she wants to talk to you, Julie. What? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Are you some kind of traitor or something, honey? I'm not mad at Addie. She calls me all the time. Hi, Addie. Oh. Has Addie been calling anybody else in his family? Well, she called me about a dress she wants from the boutique. Oh. Me about a puppet show next Saturday. Uh-huh. She called me because she Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> You know, I don't believe this family. Does anybody here know the meaning of the word loyalty? Time's up, you don't know it, so forget it. <laughs> yeah, I got it right here. I'll look it up. Bye, Addie. Well, Julie. Yes, no? I'm sure Addie said, say hi to Nell. No. <laughs> ah. Well, what did she say, honey? She said, I'll meet you later, Julie. <laughs> Just what do you have to meet Addie about, darling? The Junior Symphony she and Yvonne Anderson are organizing. <gasps> Yvonne Anderson. <laughs> so that's who she dumped me for. <laughs> Yvonne Anderson, yes. She does a lot of wonderful work with the Junior Symphony. Look, now it sounds like you're jealous about his friendship with Yvonne Anderson. Jealous? Mwah. <laughs> oh, no, darling, I'm glad that woman is out of our lives. Because of her, I haven't been spending enough time with her. <laughs> You're more than family to me. You're my friends. So let's do what friends do. Let's talk, OK? <laughs> uh, that's really sweet, Nell, but, um, I'm due over at Pam's, yeah. Uh, maybe we can talk tomorrow, OK? Yeah, well, I have to go over to Sharon's house. I better get over to Addie's. Well, I'm going next door to look at Harry Mason's new motor home. whole world. But I better go call my friend Howie and tell him I can't come over and watch him feed flies to his lizard. Uh, Joey, wait a minute. Uh, why don't you go over to your friends? Go ahead and have fun, okay? Thanks, Aunt Nell. 
Oh, Joey, wait a minute. <laughs> Here, honey, you a guest. Never go empty-handed. <laughs> My, my new very best friend, huh? Roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, merrily, merrily. Well, no, you sound in high spirits. Guess Addy called, huh? No, but I'm always in high spirits when I've just found a new very best friend. A new very best friend? Yes, Angie. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Julie. How'd the meeting go, Jewel? Okay. <laughs> what happened at the meeting, Julie? It was just a meeting with Addie and Yvonne Anderson about the Junior Symphony. Well, what does she wear, darling? I mean, do her shoes match outfits? I mean, out with it. I want to know what happened. I mean, what kind of jewelry did she wear? Were there earrings? Were there long dangling ones? Or were there pearl drops? Hmm? <laughs> Addie was very smartly turned out. When she came in the room, everyone turned around to admire her. If you think that story is going to get you in this refrigerator, you're crazier than I thought. <laughs> Nell, you asked for it. You're right, Grandpapa. Just because Addie and I are no longer speaking doesn't mean I have to hold anything against her. That's a very mature attitude, now. Yes. Well, how is she holding up these days, dear? Is she aging well? <laughs> now, it's only been a week since you saw Addie. I know, darling, but her kind of face goes fast. <laughs> Addie never looked more beautiful. I'm glad. <laughs> You know, Yvonne looked beautiful, too. <laughs> Nell, I thought you liked Yvonne Anderson. Oh, please, Grandpapa. Yvonne is so dull and boring. All she and Addie ever talk about is Beethoven, Chopin, and Bach. <laughs> Nell, that's part of the Junior Symphony program. This year marks Bach's 300th birthday. Someone should tell Angie. She'll send him a sweater. <laughs> Addie and Yvonne have really done a wonderful job in organizing the Junior Symphony. In fact, tomorrow at lunch, they're going to finalize the opening program. Oh. So you're having lunch with them tomorrow, huh? No, they're having lunch alone at the Camelot Inn. Who cares? Hey, you. your very best friend now. How would you like to have lunch tomorrow, darling? You would? That's good. Why don't we go someplace fancy? Like, uh, the Camelot Inn? <laughs> you would? Okay. Oh, what time? 12.30. 12. <laughs> Alone? Moi? Alone? 
Oh, no, no. It's just that I have been so busy this week that I haven't had a chance to have lunch with my very best friend. Your very best friend? Oh, yes. Everyone has a very best friend, and I'm having lunch with my friend today. <laughs> well, who is your very best friend? My very best friend <laughs> is Angie. Angie is your very best friend? Oh, yes. She calls me on the phone every day, oh. all the time. Hi, Mia. <laughs> I'm Angie, Nell's best friend. I've had so much about you. Yes, darling, sit down. I am so glad you wore your uniform. <laughs> Angie is involved in some very important uh, charity work. For the brownies. Want to buy some cookies? <laughs> Madam, we do not allow soliciting in this restaurant. Well, soliciting, I'm just selling cookies. <laughs> She's just full of them. I mean, she keeps me on the phone for hours. Uh, she would keep you on the phone, too, Addie, if she were your best friend, but she's not. <laughs> you know, this is the first time I've been to the Camelot Inn, but I love the movie. Do you know the rooms are named after the characters? Upstairs is the King Arthur, and through there is the Lancelot, and we happen to be seated in the Lady Guinevere room. Oh, that's the room where she and Lancelot fooled around a lot in Camelot. <laughs> when Lancelot fooled around a lot in Camelot. <laughs> well, I I'm so sorry. We, we didn't mean to come in and be having so much fun and interrupt your dull conversation. Please excuse us. <laughs> Nell, don't be ridiculous. Our conversation wasn't dull. As a matter of fact, Yvonne and I are finalizing the junior symphony season. Right, Yvonne? That's right. Oh. And I want to tell you something. Glenn Lawn is in for a very exciting musical season with yes. the touring opera company yes. coming in. Oh, yes. Angie and I are going to get season tickets. It's just oh. that uh, we couldn't decide which opera we wanted to see first. I thought you and I were going to get season tickets together. Really? Well, it's been so long since I've heard from you, I guess I just forgot. <laughs> now, what are you talking about? 555-4785. Now, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? See, already she's forgotten my phone number. <laughs> yes. 555-4785. <laughs> See, that's why she's my best friend, and that's why we're going to the opera together. I love opera. Don't talk oh, about you know, it, they're, they're opening this season with my very favorite, Don't Don Giovanni. Don't Don, let them Don Giovanni? Oh, I love Don Giovanni, yeah. but my real favorite is Madame Butterfly, even though it's so sad. That Japanese girl shouldn't commit suicide over the American sailor. Lots of mixed marriages work out. That's very true, Angie, yes. You really know about opera? Mm -hmm. My best friend knows all about opera. Um, uh, Addie, would you excuse me for one moment? I think I'm going to go powder my nose. All right. Oh, wait for me. I have to tinkle, too. <laughs> I hope you don't mind my sitting in your very best friend's chair. Yvonne is not my very best friend. You were until a few minutes ago. Oh. Oh, well then, why haven't you called me all week? Oh, we... No, you know I don't keep track of when you... I phone you, girl. You're so silly. Well, that's what best friends are for. That's the things we do. Oh. You see, I thought best friends were for sharing their joys and sorrows. You know, their ups and downs. Well, how do you expect me to share these things if you don't call me? <laughs> well, you haven't called me all week either. Listen, Adelaide Wilson, I have more important things to do to be sitting by some phone trying to call you. <laughs> well, so do I, Nellie Ruth Harper. In fact, Yvonne and I have been taking care of this program, and it has taken up all of my time. I certainly never dreamed you were sitting by the phone waiting for me to call. Who told you? <laughs> now, I don't think you understand about friendship at all. You know, everyone views friendship differently. For instance, someone like you might look at this glass and say, it's half empty. But I say, it's half full. <laughs> It's 
empty. I should have known you wouldn't understand. Nell, 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 did you know that Angie knows the entire aria to Rigoletto? La donde morame, qua pluma al vento. I can't believe it. Nell, listen. Do you mind? Now, do you mind if I borrow Angie for the for the junior opera company? She'd be such a big help. Oh no, honey, go right ahead. We can have lunch some other time, maybe on Beethoven's birthday. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Oh, no, sure, we'll talk. This is going to be so much fun for my college thesis. I get Verdi. <laughs> well, Angie's going to be so wrapped up in that opera program, she won't have time to phone you. I guess you'll have to find a new best friend who can call you every day. <laughs> you know something, Nell? You are like a lot of people in this world today, always testing their friends. You don't call them, but if they don't call you, then you think they don't care. Well, I'm going to tell you something, girl. You don't ever have to call me to prove that you care, because I know you care whether you call or not. <laughs> Now, do you want to have dinner this week? <laughs> I'd love to. Good. Don't forget to call me. I'll call you. <laughs> Sorry, babe, I got you out of the tub. Okay, okay, look. I was just called to see. Did we confirm our date for tomorrow? Fine, darling, fine, fine. Okay, whatever you say. Bye, bye. Oops. Hi, Addie, it's me again. I just wanted to catch you before you got back in the tub. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you, you were back into the tub. All right, all right, all right. No, but see, when I was calling back, I just want to make sure that we had confirmed the time for tomorrow. Okay, one o'clock is fine, okay? What do you mean don't call you anymore? Best friends are supposed to call each other. What the heck do you mean I've called you nine times this morning? Real friends don't count how many times your friends call you. Hey, look, if that's your attitude, you ain't got to worry about it, babe. You won't never hear from me again. Ever! Bye! Addie, wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, Addie, wait, wait, wait. Hey, I promise you, I'm not going to call you anymore after this time, okay? But wait, but just in case, why don't you get a phone in your bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> 